Our good word today continues to come from Romans chapter 1 as we seek better to understand 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9, Paul tells us that those Thessalonian Christians turned to the living God from their dead idols. And our theme these days has been idolatry. Last lesson, we looked at Romans chapter 1 to discover where idolatry came from. And I pointed out to you that Paul's philosophy, Paul's interpretation is exactly opposite that that you'll find in our textbooks today. Our modern textbooks teach that at one time man was polytheistic, that is, he believed in many gods. But over the years, over the centuries, he refined his religion and developed a religion of one true God. And so it's a picture of evolution. Now, the Bible says just the opposite. The Bible says that the existence of polytheism, that is, idolatry, is the result of devolution. There was a time when man knew the truth, but he turned his back on the truth. Instead of wanting the uncorruptible God, he would rather have corruptible idols. Now, we saw that God revealed himself to man in two ways, Romans chapter 1, verse 19, in conscience on the inside and creation on the outside. Man, by looking at creation, verse 20 of Romans 1, could tell the existence of God, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. And had man honored God and glorified God, there never would have been any idolatry. But we find these steps down, verse 21, in gratitude. Didn't want to give glory to God. He wanted the glory for himself. Verse 22, ignorance. He started his reasonings. Oh, how foolish it is for men to reason against God. And then this led to verse 23, which was idolatry. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. They had to have something they could see and feel and touch. Made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. And the result of idolatry, my friend, is always immorality. I say it again, you go any place in this country or in this world where you find people bowing down to idols, and you'll find immorality. Now, God gave them up. God just said, all right, if you want to live like that, go right ahead. He gave them up to uncleanness. Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie. Now, strictly speaking, it is into the lie. This is interesting. Many times in the New Testament, you find this little phrase, the lie. Not just a lie, but the lie. What is the great big lie that Satan has foisted upon mankind today? Do you realize that you have an enemy? Satan is seeking to lead people astray, and he does it through lies. In John chapter 8 and verse 44, Jesus said that Satan is the father of lies. He is a liar and a murderer. He always does lie. He's the father of it. Now, Jesus didn't say he's the father of them. He said he's the father of it. That one great big lie. What is that one great big lie? Verse 25. It's the lie of idolatry. Who changed the truth of God into the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator. Now, this is important. This is the one big lie Satan has pushed upon the world. It started back in Genesis chapter 3. Satan came to the woman in Genesis chapter 3 and said, Why don't you eat of that tree? Oh, she said, God told us not to eat of it. Oh, he said, God knows that when you eat of that tree, you shall be as gods. That's idolatry. You see, when man was willing to be a creature, then God could bless him. God is the creator. Man is the creature. And when man was willing to be the creature, then he was in the place that he belonged. But when man decided he wanted to be God, then he got into trouble. Now, Satan had done the same thing to God back in Isaiah chapter 14. I recommend you read that. Isaiah chapter 14, we have the fall of Satan. This is probably the record that has been given to us of how the angel became Satan. Isaiah fourteen twelve. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Now, Satan originally was Lucifer, the highest of the angels. He was a creature. And as long as he was willing to be a creature, 
he was all right. But he decided he wanted to be God. And this is what plunged him into that awful judgment that turned Lucifer, the son of the morning, into Satan, the prince of darkness, and with him a host of the angelic creatures. Now, Satan goes to Eve in Genesis chapter 3 and says, why don't you become God? He passes along that lie, and she believed it, and Adam believed it. Instead of becoming gods, they became slaves, slaves of sin. Now, down through the centuries, this has been the great temptation to worship and serve the creature, but not the creator. Let me ask you, whom do you worship? Now, most of the people in the world today worship themselves. You say, well, how can I tell what I worship? Well, what do you live for? Do you live for Jesus Christ? When you spend your money, do you say, I want to spend my money to the glory of Christ? When you use your time, do you say, I want to use my time to the glory of Christ? When you have parties at your house or when you go on vacation, do you say, I want to do this to the glory of Christ? That's what it means to serve Christ. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now the lie, Romans 1.25, is to worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. Whatever you worship is the thing you serve. I know some men who worship their car. I know men who would do anything just to get a better car. They'd lie. They'd cheat. They'd falsify their income tax. They would sell their souls just to get a better car or a boat or some kind of a fancy house. How many people there are today who have fancy houses and no homes in them? Children going wrong and wives who are unhappy, but they've got to have their house, got to have their car, got to have their, their boat. Well, the thing that you serve is the thing that you worship. Now, you can't separate worship and service. Whatever you worship, you serve. If you worship money, you serve money. You worship pleasure, you serve pleasure. The devil came to Jesus in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4. And he said, I'll give you all these kingdoms of the world if you'll just worship me. And Jesus said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, the devil hadn't said one word about service. All that the devil said was, You worship me, and I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. But Jesus knew that whatever you worship is the thing that you serve. Now, you find out what a man is serving, and that's what he's worshiping. And that's his God. Now, when you worship and serve Jesus Christ, then you have blessing. But when you worship and serve yourself or other things, you have no blessing. Now, this is what idolatry is. Idolatry is worshiping and serving the creature rather than the creator. That's what it is. That's where it came from. Now, question number two in our little study is, what does idolatry do to people? We know where it came from and what it is. Now, what does it do to people? Well, first of all, idolatry enslaves people. I've already pointed out to you that whatever you worship, you serve. Now, I don't mind being enslaved to Jesus Christ. This doesn't bother me one bit. Paul, in his letters, writes, Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ. He's proud of that. I don't mind wearing the yoke of Jesus Christ. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. I want to be a slave of Jesus Christ. I'll trust him with my life. I'll trust him with my family. I'll trust him with everything I have because he can be trusted. But I don't want to be a slave of anything else. Now, idolatry enslaves men. In Jeremiah chapter 8, Jeremiah is talking to the, the people who uh, had been sinning against the Lord. It says in verse 2, They shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven, whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked and whom they have sought and whom they have worshipped. He says that when the judgment comes, the bones of all these false priests and prophets are going to be dug out of their sepulchers and laid out to be bleached before the very elements of heaven that they worshipped. Let me read that to you again. Jeremiah chapter 8. At that time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of his princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves and they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven, whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked and whom they have sought and whom they have worshipped. Now, this is interesting. Whatever you worship is going to enslave you. They loved their idols. They served them. They walked in them. They sought them. They lived for him. You better be careful what you worship because it will enslave you. Idolatry enslaves a man. I know people who are slaves of hi-fi sets. Slaves of boats, 
Slaves of money, that's what they live for. It's idolatry, putting the creature ahead of the creator. Remember the story of the prodigal son? He's a perfect illustration of all of this. The prodigal son didn't appreciate what his father did for him. He came one day and said, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. That's ingratitude. That's Romans 1.21, ingratitude. And he became ignorant, went out to the far country and wasted his substance with riotous living and gave himself over to all kind of immorality. And this is the way people are today. They live for things. So what does idolatry do to people? It enslaves them. Secondly, it disappoints them. Idolatry always is a disappointing thing. Now, when you start worshiping some idol, I don't care if it's money or what it is, you start worshiping it, it satisfies for a while. But over in Isaiah chapter 44, beginning in verse 9, he describes how the man makes this idol. They form a god, they make a molten image, and it's so foolish that they take the tree and they cut part of the tree down and make an image, and with the rest of the tree, they burn it in their fireplace for heat. How strange that one piece of wood from the same tree should be fuel and the other piece of wood should be a god. And, and Isaiah the prophet is laughing at them. And he says that they, uh, they've turned to these gods. Verse 17, And the residue, what's left thereof, he maketh a god, even his gra graven image. He falleth down unto it and worshipeth it and prayeth unto it and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my god. They have not known nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see and their hearts that they cannot understand. Their gods can't help them. It says in verse 20, he feedeth on ashes. Idolatry feeds you on ashes. Now, I know I'm talking to some Christian people right now. You have idols in your life. I may be talking to a Christian teenager, and that boyfriend or girlfriend is an idol in your life, or that car, or that job, and you can't put God first in your life because of that thing. Well, it won't satisfy you. It'll disappoint you. Now, in Psalm 115, we find out that idolatry will change you. You become like the God that you worship. Did you know that? In Psalm 115, the heathen are saying to the Jewish people, where's your God? We can't see your God. We've been looking all around Jerusalem. Where's your God? Oh, he says in Psalm 115, our God's in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. We don't have a God you can see, but we know that he's the living and true God through his word. Now he talks about the idols, verse 4. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. You worship an idol, my friend, and you, it can't talk to you. You won't get any wisdom from an idol. Your money doesn't talk. People say money talks. All it ever says is goodbye to some folks, but money doesn't talk. It's an idol. Mouths have they, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. Your God can't watch you. He can't care for you if he's an idol. They have ears, but they hear not. You can't pray to that kind of a God. Noses have they, but they smell not. You can't offer sacrifices that he'll appreciate. They have hands, but they handle not. He can't reach down and save you. Feet have they, but they walk not. He can't fellowship with you. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them, so is everyone that trusteth in them. You become like the God that you worship. You show me a man who worships money, I'll show you somebody who's hard, just like money, hard. You show me somebody who worships pleasure, I'll show you somebody who's shallow and changing, just like pleasure. Idolatry enslaves, it disappoints, it changes people, and finally it condemns people. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 and Revelation 22 15, we are warned that those who worship idols go to hell. Now I want to warn you, idolatry is dangerous. In our next lesson, we're going to talk about some of the idols that we have today and how we can detect them. This is Pastor Warren Wearsby at Calvary Baptist Church in Covington, Kentucky. This program is What's the Good Word? And we're glad that you've listened today. May the Lord bless you as you continue studying the Word with us.